Hi guys, I am Sir Angelo. Hello, and I'm Sir Mivolin. And today we are going to the experiment on moments. But first of all, let us get to know the instrument. So in this experiment, you will be using few instruments. The first one is a moment disc with a pivot. The second one is a bolt with pin. Next, we have a weight holder. And next, we have a slotted weight. And finally, we have two spring balance. So that's it, guys. So let's do our experiment. Are you guys ready? Let's do this. Yes, let's do this. Yeah. Hi again, guys. So before you begin this experiment, you need to know the objectives. So there are three objectives in this experiment. The first one is to determine torque as a function of distance. The second one is to determine torque as a function of angle. And finally, to determine torque as a function of force. So, are you guys ready? Let's start this. Samif, take the floor. Alright, now, you know all the objectives ready? Let's proceed with the experiment. Alright, get your lab manual ready and look at the table that has been provided for you. So, for the first experiment, you are supposed to do based on your distance. Okay? So, look at this, your this moment. And look back at your table. At your table, you can see it says that M is a fixed mass and R2 is 12 cm. What does this M tell you? This is actually mass. Okay? However, for this experiment, we've already concluded that the mass that you'll be using in this experiment will be 60 gram. Okay? And then, now, look at this. This is your moment disc, as Sir Angelo has, has explained just now. Okay? This is your bolt pin. This is your pivot. So, the pivot to the nearest hole here is 3 cm. Okay? This is fixed. And then the next interval will be 6. So, 3, 6, 9, 12. Okay? So, the interval from the origin or the pivot is 3, 3, 3. Okay? Take note on that one. On the other hand, there's one last pin here which is 13. This actually indicates 13 to the center of it. However, we won't be using that one. Okay? Just take note of that one. So, the distance between one point to one point on this side from 12 to the next pin is 1 cm. On the other hand, the others are 3 cm, 3 cm, 3 cm, and 3 cm. So, now that you've already determined the pin and what is the distance value, take note that this one is your R1, this one is your R2. However, it can be interchanged. But for this experiment, let's make it fixed. This one is R1, this one is R2. In a way of speaking, you know that torque is equal to force times your perpendicular distance. So, let's just say this is your torque 1, this is your torque 2. Okay, so going back into the experiment, it says R1. Okay, as you can see, R1 here is your manipulated, responding, or constant. It's obviously this one is your manipulated, where you manipulated your R1, and where from there you can get your force. Your force is your responding variable. Okay, so for this part, you only need to do here and here. On the top, you can calculate later. And then, before you proceed with the experiment, make sure to get your constant where your mass is 60 gram and your R2 is 12 cm. Now, allow me to demonstrate to you how to do the first objective. So, now we know that this one is R1 and this one is R2. And we know that R2 is 12 cm as a fix. So, take your bolt pin, remove it and put it at 12 cm. Remember, the 12 cm actually tells you the distance from the pivot. So, this is 12 cm. Next. What is it that you need to put? It is your mass, which is 60 gram. Okay, so take your slotted weight and place it here and put it up to 60 gram. And then this is where you manipulated the distance of R1. Remember, this side is your first stop and this one is your second stop. You've already determined this one is your R1, this one is your R2. So let's begin with the first one. Place your weight. So now, you have here is your first distance. So the distance from the center of your R1 is 3 cm. Okay? So now that you know this is your 3 cm, take your spring balance okay, and pull it down. So what is it that you're supposed to do now is just to balance it out. As you can see here, it is already balanced. Once it's balanced, Take the reading, okay, of how many newton. Take for example, this one is roughly around 0 0.1 newton, okay. So moving on to the next one is move your R1 to another distance. Now this is 
six centimeter to your fiber and then balance it again okay notice that it requires a little bit more force than before now it's 0 0.3 newton and then the next one move it again to nine centimeter and then pull it again now it actually increased up to 0 0.5 roughly okay but make sure when you take your reading it is balanced on both sides okay so repeat the experiment and then calculate your thought all right going into objective number two we will be using both sides where R1 and R2 is equal to 6 cm, what does this tell you? This actually tells you that both sides are constant and you have two components that you need to make constant, the distance and the force applied. So we've already determined that this one is R1, this one is R2. So here it says R1 and R2 is equal to 6 cm. However, take note that we will not be using this 6 cm and we'll be changing it to 3 cm. Okay, take note. So now R1 and R2 is equal to 3 cm and F2 is equal to 1 Newton. What does this tell you? Now go back to the moment this. R1, R2. So R1 is equal to 3 cm. Remember, the first screen is 3 cm to the pivot. 3 cm. Next is your R2. 3 cm. We've already fulfilled the first condition where it says here R1. R2 is equal to 3 cm. Remember, change this to 3 cm. And next we have F2 is equal to 1 Newton. So what does this F2 tell you? Just remember, when you indicate this one as your R1 and this one as your R2, it means to say this is your F2, this is your F1. Alright guys, now welcome back to objective number 2. So as you can see here, objective number 2 is where you determine the moment of function in terms of your angle. Okay. So from here, before you proceed to your table, look at what's constant. He says here R1 and R2 is equal to 3 cm and F2 is equal to 1 Newton. This actually tells you that you need to put all this constant before taking any data and place it on your table. So, the constant is that this is your R1 as you determined earlier and this one is your R2. So, R1 and R2 must be 3 cm fixed to the pivot point. So, this is 3 cm and then this one to this side is 3 cm. So, we fulfill that part. Next, you need to determine where your F2 is equal to 1 Newton. So if F2 is 1 Newton, this side is your F2 because this is R1, this is R2. So R2, F2, R1, F1. So for your, for your second objective, your force on this side should be a constant of 1 Newton where you'll be manipulating the angle. All right. So look at this one. So for this experiment, I will be pulling this one at a fix of 1 Newton, take note of this one. So one person pulls this one at 1 Newton, okay, and balance it out. As you can see at this angle, it is 30 degree. On the other hand, your partner will try to balance it out, okay. So now I'll release this one and pull it at 30 degree angle at 1 Newton. And your, my partner will actually try to balance it out. So now it is balanced at 1 Newton and you can see that this one is balanced. So if it's already balanced, take the reading that is on the second part, which is your partner's spring balance. So for this case, look back your table. There, you are actually supposed to manipulate your angle. So remember just now I put at 30. So your force for F1 is where your partner actually pull it to balance. So at 30 degree angle, it is equivalent to the force that was pulled on this side. Okay. Repeat the experiment for different angle, 30, perhaps 45, or even 60, 90, and a maximum up to 90 only, okay? So make sure you don't exceed 90 degree. So once you've already get the, gotten your angle and your force, then you can calculate your torque. However, the torque calculation for this side will be a bit different, which I will explain later. Now, going into objective 3, it is similar to your objective 1. However, when you're doing for your objective 3, take note of the constant. The constant is R1 is equal to 9 cm, R2 is equal to 6 cm. Always remember, before you proceed with the experiment, take note of the constant. So we know R1 is 9 cm. 
So we know that the interval from the first point is 3 cm. So 3, 6, 9. Place this one at 9 cm. So we know that this one is 9 cm. And now we know R2 is 6 cm. 3, 6. So we've already fulfilled the constant. So let's look back at your table. Your table actually says your mass is your manipulated variable, your force is your responding variable. These are the two things that you need to input. So we know that the mass is something that you need to change. So take for example, I begin with 10 gram. So take your slotted weight and take it up to 10 gram. Okay? So place it on your R1 and then pull this one. So as you can see here, roughly speaking, it is at 0 0.2 Newton for 10 gram. So you can see that the manipulated variable is 10 gram and the responding variable is 0 0.2 Newton of force, where this one is your F2. So how do you fill in your data? Mass is equals to 10 gram. The responding force to balance it out is equals to 0 0.2 Newton. Take note that this is just an example. You are free to manipulate your mass. Alright, now let's move on to the calculation part on how to calculate your torque. Take note that the formula for torque is given as force times the perpendicular distance of your R, where it also can be seen from your unit when Newton meter, where F, the unit is in Newton, and for your R, it is in meter. So now, take for example, I already have the data, a theoretical data that I've already concluded, where R1 is equal to 6 cm, and the responding force for you to balance it out is 10, or let's say 12 Newton, okay? This is just an example, okay? So how do you calculate for torque 1? Take note, torque is equal to force times the perpendicular distance. So for here, for your R1, what is the equivalent F1? You don't take your F2 because this is different. F2, R1 is way different already. F2, R2 is equal to your torque 2. F1, R1 is equal to your torque 1. So for this one, you need to find its own force. So how do you calculate the force for R1? We do not have that one, correct or not? From here, you can see you can only have force number 2. However, take note that just now, you have a fixed mass of 60 gram. So from your fixed mass of 60 gram, we know F is equal to mass times by your gravity. So from here, having this information, you can actually find the force for your F1, where the force for F1 is equal to your mass, which is 60 gram, converted to kg divided by 1000 times by 9.81. From there, you can actually get your force for your R1. So F1 times R1. And then you can get your value. And then for torque number 2, just take your 12 Newton, okay, that is your F, where torque is equal to your force, which is 12 Newton times the perpendicular distance, okay? So for your perpendicular distance, you actually take what is the distance of your F2. Your F2 is written here as R2, 12 cm. So we have F2, you have R2, 12 cm. So just take 12 times 12, where the force is 12 Newton, the radius to the pivot is 12 cm. However, take note of one thing. This is given in terms of meter, and this one is given in terms of centimeter. Make sure to convert it into your meter, where if you were to convert it from centi, meter to meter, times it by exponent negative 2. And that is how you actually calculate for your top. Now, moving into your objective 2. If you were to say in your objective 2, you have this one, okay? So, you're pulling, for example, a force of 5 Newton, okay? On the other hand, you are actually pulling this one at a certain angle. Take for example, this is an angle of 30 degree. Okay? So we know that torque is equals to F times the perpendicular distance of your R. So you can see here 90 degree. So F times your R. However, for this side, it is not that simple because 
your distance is not perpendicular. So you must always find the perpendicular force to your distance. So now, take for example, I have this experiment here. How do you find for this side? As you can see, if I were to redraw this one, it looks something like this. Where this is the force that you are pulling exactly at one Newton. And then this one is the distance. Take for example, this distance is equals to three centimeter. So how do you find the perpendicular force? Okay, this is where you actually use your trigonometric. So you have already learned sine theta, cos theta, and your tangent theta. So from here, you can see that this is your angle, your beta, which is your acute angle. So since this is your acute angle, this acute angle is always pointing towards your opposite. And we know that your force of one Newton is your hypotenuse, and then the following one would be your adjacent. Since we want the perpendicular force and the radius to the pivot, your formula should be top is equals to your perpendicular distance of your force is F sine theta times by your R. Why do we use sine theta? Because we're using sine theta where sine theta is equals to your opposite divided by your hypotenuse. So for this case, you know that your hypotenuse is your one Newton. So this one moved to the other side. So you have H sine theta equals to your opposite. So notice that your H now is your one Newton. So one sine 30 is equivalent to your opposite side of your force. F opposite where this one is your F opposite. Therefore, to calculate for that part, you need to use this formula where T is equal to F sine theta times R. And take note, the value of your TOC1, TOC2, TOC1, and TOC2 should be equal. In a way of speaking, take for example, your TOC here is 5 Newton meter. This one should also have 5 Newton meter. Why? This actually tells you that you have fulfilled the condition where both sides is balanced. So, TOC1 is equal to TOC2 only if they are balanced. So, that concludes our video. Good luck.